And I am very, very pleased to have on the phone with me right now, Jenny Newberry. Hey, Jenny, you there? I am. How are you? I'm doing good. We had a hard time getting connected today. It's been one of those days in Radio Land where things just don't always go the way they're supposed to go. <laughs> right, but that makes you appreciate it all the more, right? That's exactly right. Now, to give a little bit of an introduction to Jenny, Jenny and I have actually never met face-to-face. We um, met because her sister, right after the death of her husband, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but right after the death of your husband, your sister was actually reading my blogs to you over the phone sometimes. Is that right? Yeah. Just because I I tend to, you know, moan and wail a lot and and I do it in public and she was feeling, you know, some of the same things that I was feeling. So we kind of connected through that and uh, and really have formed a friendship just through sort of online and uh, and encouraging each other now through different times that we're going through. So I'm really, really happy that you were that you were willing to come on today. Your husband's your husband's name is Ron. So tell me, first of all, tell us a little bit about how you and Ron met. Okay. Um, I love to tell this story. Ron um, worked here. I live in, we live in Cairo. Um, and I worked at Ameris Bank during the summers. I teach school. Um, and, you know, I was young, younger. And so I always had a part-time job. And I worked at the bank. And the girls kept telling me about this hot guy that would come through. <laughs> you know, and I thought, whatever. You know, he, I'm sure he's cute. Well, he drove through, and, and he was. He was extremely nice looking. So, of course, I smiled, and, and we kind of flirted a little bit back and forth um, for a couple of weeks. And then one day, he said, what do single people do around here? And I won't re- repeat my response to that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> he asked for my phone number, and I did not give it to him that day. Um, and he left, and the next week, he came back, and he said, why didn't you give me your number? And I said, well, if you really wanted it, you would come back. And he did. Um, so we talked on the phone for a couple of weeks, um, but... I forgot the most important part. After after he left that day, I twirled around on my stool and fell down. I literally fell off my stool. And I would laugh telling him later, you know, I literally fell head over heels for you. <laughs> we, um, we, you know, we began to date a little bit. And, and we dated for about a year. And we got engaged. And we got married um, in the summer of 2005. Mm-hmm. Um, he, was, he was older than I am, um, very well traveled. He was in the Army, 82nd Airborne Paratrooper. Um, he served his country in Granada. He was shot there, um, snorkeled the Red Sea, blessed in Bethlehem, um, stood on Mount Sinai, mm. all the, the things that a South Georgia girl didn't know a whole lot about. All right. Sounds like he lived a um, full life, though. He did. He did. Um, I remember him telling me this story, and it's so significant now that in Granada, he, one of his partner not, you don't call them partners, but the, the other mm. army men, um, one was shot, and, and Ron held him as he died. And I said, why, why? And he said, because I didn't want him to die alone. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, and, and he suffered through a lot yeah. in his life. I look back, and it was a short life, but it was a very full life. Right. Um, you know, so we dated and got married, and his favorite song ever is Seven Bridges Road by the Eagles. <laughs> very familiar song. Mm-hmm. And later I will tell you the significance of, of that song, that song. Uh-huh. right now. But, um, you know, we, we were married five and a half years, mm-hmm. have a beautiful baby boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we built a house. We lived a lifetime. I mm-hmm. didn't know it at the time, but we built a lifetime mm-hmm. in five and a half years. Yeah, it absolutely sounds like it. Now, tell us about that night. Um, well, it was October the 19th, and I kind of refer to that day as the day that now defines time mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Um, the night before was very peaceful. He... I remember Jacob standing, that's our baby, he was standing at the door, and he heard Ron drive up, and he yelled, Daddy's home. And I could hear Ron's footsteps coming up the back deck, and he flung the door open, and he said, There's my boy. Picked him up, twirled him around, um, and I stood and watched. You know, Mm -hmm. it it wasn't Mm -hmm. unusual, but I stood and watched, and he went and grilled our dinner for us. We sat at the dinner table, had a very nice meal, nice conversation. And I remember him telling me this little story of something that had happened that day, which is very insignificant now, Mm -hmm. but he didn't want to laugh about it. Mm -hmm. And I was laughing, and and he broke out into the most beautiful smile. (laughs) And and I even remember thinking that at the time, that he was so handsome. Yeah. Um, But anyway, and and that night at the dinner table, we were talking about um, a lady that I work with has cancer. And I was telling him, you know, she's not doing well. And, and he looked at me and he said, 
you don't know how blessed we are to be so healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, and little did I know that just mm-hmm. 10 short hours later what I would do. But anyway, that morning um, we woke up, or I woke up about 3 o'clock. Jacob was wet. I, the kind of protocol was I took the diaper off, Ron put the new one on. Mm-hmm. And, and that happened. Ron got up, put the diaper on him. Jacob, that's how Jacob got in our bed. Now, was he feeling so, bad at all? Did he mention not feeling well? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, we went back to sleep, and he normally woke me up at five thirty. My first response that morning after after everything happened, I said he woke me up at five thirty. Mm-hmm. Hindsight, I don't know if he did. Mm-hmm. But right before I got up, I remember him snoring, just this bear snore, mm-hmm. and it kind of shook us. And I I reached over and touched him, and I said, baby, stop. And he stopped, Mm -hmm. which now I know that's called agonal breathing. Mm -hmm. When someone has a heart attack, that's probably the ex, when he exhaled Um, his last breath. Wow. I did not know that at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I got up, I drank my coffee. It was a blessedly calm, almost mundane Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. You know, got to get up, got to get ready, drink my coffee, take my shower. Um, I walked back in the bedroom after I had taken a shower and, and I had gotten dressed and I walked in and I tickled his foot and his foot was really cold that morning. And I said, Oh baby, you're so cold. And I covered him up mm-hmm. and I walked around and, you know, and I was tickling Jacob. He had to go to school that day and, mm-hmm. you know, get up, get up. And I laid down beside him and I remember looking at Ron's chest thinking, gosh, he's not, he, he must be really in a deep sleep. He's hardly breathing. Mm-hmm. Well, then I panicked, and I jumped up, and I went over, and I, you know, I said, wake up now. I'm, I'm not playing with you anymore. And, he, of course, he didn't. Mm. Um, and I remember putting my fingers on his neck to feel his pulse. And all I could feel was my own pulse mm-hmm. in my fingers. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm, I'm shaking him, and I'm saying, Ron, I'm going to call 911. You're going to be so embarrassed. You better get up. Quit playing with me. <laughs> and I put my finger on his eyelid. Because before, you know, I, I was rude about things. I was mean sometimes and just picking at him. I would mm-hmm. pull his eyelid open. <laughs> and I put my finger there to do it. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I didn't. I pulled, mm-hmm. I snatched my hand away. Because in my heart, I knew that the eyes that I love to look at me mm-hmm. would not look back at me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of when I left. I, my, I left my own body. I, I truly believe God took over at that moment. Mm-hmm. I picked the phone up. I called my mama, and I said, I can't wake him up. You've got to get up here. I put the phone down. I ran and turned the lights on, and I came back, almost like I had rehearsed this. Mm-hmm. I dialed 911 as calmly as I could. I told them my name, my address, Ron's name, his age, how to get to my house, what the problem was, and I was about to begin CPR. Mm-hmm. Um and I did. I, 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 I did CPR, and I cried and cried, and, and never before had I not gotten my way with him if I cried. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I could cry and get anything I wanted out of that man. <laughs> um, but he, well, before I started CPR, Jacob had been asleep on his chest. Um, I rolled Jacob over. He never woke up. Um, and, and I've said this before, that old song, Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. hmm it, it was. Yeah. You could feel it. Um, our neighbor came about that time. I was still doing CPR. She came. And I remember her looking at me. She touched him and she said, Jenny, he's gone. And I knew he was. My heart knew he was. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't give up. Um, the paramedics came. Um, and I kept, I stood there for a minute and I, and I took it in and I said, this is how this feels. Mm-hmm. This is how it feels to see your love not here. Mm-hmm. Um, he left without me. And and I took it in for a minute. Um, she took Jacob out of the room. My neighbor did. She took him out. Um, and I stood, and I, and I kept thinking, his daddy's life slipped out from under his head. Yeah. How did he not feel that? You know, and, and I've, I've, I heard myself saying it like a thief took him in the night. Mm-hmm. But... Truly, God took him gently that morning right. from his body. Mm-hmm. His body was still there. Um, and I heard I heard our neighbor call my principal here at school, and, and I heard her say the words, Cheryl, Ron Newberry died in his sleep last night. 
and it stunned me, and I thought, I got mad, and I thought, how dare you say that? You don't know that. Right. But she did. Mm-hmm. She did. And I, and I looked at her, and I said, what do I do? What do I do? And and she's a very tough woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was crying, and she said, I don't know. You know, she told me to lay on the floor and kick and scream, I would have done it. Mm-hmm. And you would think your first response would be to pray. Mm-hmm. And I did pray. All through, and I was crying out to God, don't you know who I am? Mm-hmm. Don't you know who I am? Why are why me? Why now? Don't you know I'm not strong enough for this? Mm-hmm. But apparently I was mm-hmm. because he didn't give me a choice that morning. He didn't ask me what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, and from that moment, God has carried me. My feet have yet to hit the ground because I'm in his hands. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for 15 weeks now, we've survived. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but anyway, back to it. They They said that at the hospital, that he apparently, there are only three reasons why an a seemingly healthy man would die in his sleep. Mm-hmm. And it was either a pulmonary embolism, heart attack, or um, sleep apnea. And the, the preliminary results were that he had a heart attack. Um, now, he, when I say that, I always have to preface this with, he was very fit. He mm-hmm. was 6 to 185 pounds. He, was, he ran. He surfed, swam. He was, if you looked at him, you thought, man, he's fit. Mm -hmm. Not the typical sit in his chair, have a heart attack kind of person. Not that there's a a face that goes with a heart attack, Mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and he was very quiet. I want to tell a little bit about him if if we have time. Sure, go ahead. We've got about five more minutes. Okay, he was very quiet. He was very reserved. Um, He was the kind of man that it's better to keep, it's better to be thought rude by keeping your mouth shut than open your mouth and be proven Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. Um, But he was also the kind of man that would say, the Lord, let me live one more day. Mm -hmm. Look at this beautiful day that that God has given us. Um, You know, you've been talking about the stages of grief. Right. And I don't believe there's a checkoff list Mm -mm. to those stages. It is that day, that very day, I felt all five. Mm -hmm. Even acceptance. I accepted that Ron died peacefully. Mm Mm-hmm. I, you know, I was mad, I was bitter, I was in denial. Of course I was in shock. Um, but there's that little tinge of, okay, that's okay. That's a peaceful way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I was at peace with that. Yeah, and I imagine, too, with it being so sudden, that's one of the things that most of the research shows, that when it's so sudden like that, that it's just hard to accept. You know, but it sounds like you were already accepting that at the time. I know that with my brother, we talked about this a little bit last night because his was a little prolonged. My brother died, um, as the listeners, some of the listeners may know, but some may not. My brother died when he was 21. Um, He had a car accident, which was very sudden and surprising. But we had three days where we didn't know if his brain was dead or not. And uh, so I can remember during that time bargaining with God. I don't know if you went through any of that at all, but just saying, you know, can I just can I let me open my eyes right now and just pretend this didn't happen. And then I'll go be a missionary in Africa. Uh-huh. If you'll just make this all rewind. Can we just rewind? I'll go be, you know, no questions asked. I'll just be a missionary in Africa. And I can remember once he was part of the acceptance for me was once he had actually died, once we knew for sure that he had died, I remember feeling in my heart, the Lord say to me, would you be willing to go to Africa anyway? Uh-huh. You know, do you love me anyway? And right. uh, and so it was just a profound acceptance for me to be able to get past that, you know, bargaining and and all the denial. I remember dressing up the day that we were supposed to find out that if, if he was um, alive or not, if his brain was still alive. I dressed up in his favorite outfit. My brother, he, I don't know if you ever knew Claude, but he was very flamboyant and he <laughs> loved it when I would dress up and look pretty. So I put on my prettiest little outfit and I got ready, you know, for him to come back to us that third day. Yeah. And he didn't. He didn't come yeah. back. And that was just like a blow. It was like a, a realization that, okay, this is real uh, yeah, from here and, on out. And and I'm sure you asked why. Oh, absolutely. Yep. You know, it, it just, yeah, I had some of the bargaining. You talked about dreams. Mm-hmm. And one of the very first dreams that I had, it was me telling Ron, baby, we have to get you to the doctor. We have to get you to the hospital by Tuesday. Mm-hmm. We have to get you there by Tuesday. If we don't get you there, you're going to die Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Mm-hmm. And that's a hard dream. 